Today, I am going to talk about diagnostic immunology and application for antigen antibody interaction. And as you know, that in vivo, if someone gets infected by a microorganism, so the body will produce antibodies, and these antibodies will bind to the antigens of the microorganism. But however, in vitro, we use some techniques to diagnose some or several uh, disorders or diseases. For example, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay or ELISA. ELISA is a qualitative method and a quantitative method for detection of antigens or antibodies. Types of ELISA are direct ELISA. In, in this direct ELISA, we put the antigen in between two antibodies like a sandwich. So we coat the plate with antibodies that suspected or the serum from the patient. Then, or we add uh, uh, antibodies suspected they are raised or specific to these antigens. Then we add serum of the patient. For example, in case of uh, HIV infection, some proteins are upregulated early. So if these proteins are specific for these antibodies, they will bind. Then they will add another or secondary antibodies labeled or linked to the enzyme. Then we add the substrate. Then yeah, changing color indicates that this patient in, is infected uh, with HIV. The second type of ELISA is indirect uh, ELISA. So if we suspected that this individual uh, is infected by any infection, for example, malaria or whatever, so we coat the blood with antigens from that pathogen. And then we add the serum. So specific antibodies will bind. Then we add secondary uh, antibodies labeled with enzyme and we add substrate. This will change the color if these antibodies are specific for this antigen, and this we call it indirect ELISA. Third type of ELISA, uh, in, in this type, uh, antibodies uh, compete, or, or different antibodies compete for the same antigen. And this ELISA is used to determine concentration of antibodies or antigens. And now I'm going to talk about another technique. It is known as complement uh, fixation test, and it is for diagnosis of some diseases or pathogens causing some diseases. In this technique, actually, we add serum to these two uh, bottles. Then we heat to get rid of the complement, but not to get rid of antibodies. Then we add the antigen of interest, this in red. So if this antigen is specific for these antibodies, it will bind. Then this will lead to formation of immune complex. And as you know that immune complex fix the complement. Then we add complement, okay? Following that, we add red plus cells, for example, of sheep. And then we add antibodies specific for these uh, red blood cells. So the antibodies will bind to the sheep. And since the complement here is consumed by these immune complexes, so red blood cells will settle down and no, no lysis occur. But however, if the patient serum does not contain specific antibodies like here, so 
when we add antigens and then when we add complement both of them now are free because there is no antibodies then we add red blood cells sheep red blood cells and specific antibodies anti-sheep antibodies that will bind to the uh, sheep red blood cells so here since the, this complement is not consumed it will bind and induce lysis of red blood cell and the change in this uh, container will change uh, to pink that means no antibodies that means hemolysis now i'm going to talk about uh, precipitation test and agglutination test the difference between precipitation and agglutination is very simple. Precipitation test is for detection of soluble antigens, antigens in fluids. For example, antibodies, they are soluble proteins. But however, agglutination is for detection of solid antigens. For example, blood grooving, for example, uh, rhesus, uh, factor in, in in precipitation we add uh, antibodies to an equal amount of antigens so antibodies must have more than one binding site and the antigens they should be uh, soluble and bivalent so they will bind to each other they will lead to formation of immune complex or insoluble lattice lattice formation that means uh, insoluble uh, resulted from soluble when they are free so if you are interested to separate some or specific antibodies so you can change them to insoluble form and this technique is known as precipitation test. However, in blood grooming, okay, and when we add uh, antibodies specific for some antigens on the surface of the red blood cell, and if these antibodies are agglutinating, this will lead to clumping of uh, red blood cells. And also, we use it for detection of rhesus uh, factor and now i am going to talk about another technique which is very important and known as polymerase chain reaction or pcr this pcr is very important for detection of, of uh, dna so first when should uh, isolate or extract dna from cells then following some processes we make copies from uh, this uh, dna and we run it in the cell so we determine the presence of uh, some uh, uh, pathogens by using this sensitive method uh, of course bcr is more sensitive than elisa it is more sensitive than uh, ELISA, PCR technique. So in some instances, we use uh, PCR as a confirmatory uh, test. Other confirmatory tests we know is Western plot uh, test. It is uh, a test uh, to detect protein of interest in bowl of proteins and it confirm HIV infection. So in case if 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 you detect if you detected HIV by using ELISA, like in here, this is not enough. Why? Because some antigens or some antibodies may be similar to other. This we call it uh, cross uh, reactivity. And as you know, in case of 
streptococci infection or streptococcus pyogenes, the body may mount or upregulate antibodies against streptococci, but these streptococci will cross-react with the heart due to molecular mimicry or due to this uh, similarity uh, between the sequences on the surface of streptococci and on the wall of the heart. So one should run some confirmatory tests, uh, for example, PCR and Western plot. Another technique known as Northern plot, North, Northern plot, and this technique is used to detect RNA in a mixture of RNA. So if you have mixture of RNA and you want to detect the RNA of interest, we follow or we use Northern plot technique. Another technique, it is known as South Saram plot. South plot is uh, very useful in detection of a specific sequence of DNA in blood or in tissues. Thank you very much, Professor Ahmed Polat.